I sent them three pictures of that trim piece and said, if it's super simple, please just do it. And they didn't fix it. Ugh. We're headed back again. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Yes, I am once again on my way back to the Tesla service center for another service appointment. Now, if you guys have watched my previous video when I talked about my first experience at the Tesla service center, overall was great. Like, you know, they replaced some parts and, you know, fixed some things, didn't fix other things that I wish they would have, I'm still having problems with. But overall, I think the experience is pretty positive. That being said, when I got my car back, I was driving it around a little bit and I noticed a couple things that were wrong again. And so I had to immediately make another service appointment. The first thing that was kind of still messed up was actually a byproduct of what they fixed the last time, which was my passenger side door buttons weren't working. So the window control and the door control, the only way you could get out was using the emergency release, which you're not supposed to do. So I needed to get that fixed. They did fix it. They found out that some of the connectors weren't connected. Don't know how that happens, but that's what was happening. And so the buttons weren't working, obviously. So they fixed those. But to do that, they had to take the door panel trim pieces off. And when they put the door panel trim pieces back on, they didn't put them all the way back on. So some of the pieces were popped out and I couldn't get them popped back in. I didn't want to mess with it too much. So I just wanted to take it back in, get them to fix that. I also noticed something random that my trunk cover piece was kind of popped out. I don't know what they would have needed to access the trunk for, or if that was me, but that needs to get fixed. So that was fine, not a big deal. That's one little thing, right? Then I was driving on kind of a windy road and I was, you know, turning my wheel pretty far left and right. And I heard this really weird, almost like, like brushing noise, like a kind of noise, like pieces were rubbing together. And that's definitely a noise that I have not heard before. And I know that last time they replaced the steering column module that was giving me a lot of errors. I assume they had to take apart some of the steering wheel to do that. And that's why I'm getting that weird rubbing noise. So not only is the steering column module still giving me the same errors, but the steering wheel is making that weird noise when I turn it. So all these things kind of piled up and I was like, I just, I just want to get it looked at again. Not that I necessarily think that these are like life threatening or, you know, damaging to the vehicle or anything like that. But you know, again, this is a brand new car, right? I bought a 2024 Model 3 refresh. So this should be something that I'm not dealing with this early on. So definitely something that I needed to get fixed there. Just a little frustrating things. I was able to schedule the service appointment relatively soon after all those other things, but I had just gotten my car back and it's just a real pain in the butt to have to just immediately schedule another service appointment. So the day's finally here. I'm on my way back to my second service appointment in about as many weeks. I think it's been more like three weeks, but nonetheless, I'm sure the handoff process for my loaner will be just as seamless. But now my concern is like, am I going to get it back? And they fixed the trim piece over here. They've replaced the steering column module again. They fixed the steering wheel issue. Is there going to be like another issue that comes up after they've supposedly supposed to have fixed these issues? Like, am I just going to be doing this kind of cyclical, you know, going to a service appointment every time? I need this to be a little bit cleaner. I need them to just get all these things fixed and me not have to bring it back again to get, you know, Things that should have gotten fixed the first time fixed again. That's just silly stuff and shouldn't be happening. Let's go ahead and drop my car off here. So same process as last time. I'm a little early, so I don't know if it'll let me do it. There is just some crazy weather that's been going on here. We've been getting tornadoes and crazy rain and stuff. Look at the clouds out here. They're saying it's going to be done by 430. I don't believe that in the slightest. Ooh, we can, uh, while we're here, we can try auto park. there. All right. Well, that wasn't as easy as last time. Um, for some reason, the app was glitched and it wouldn't let me accept the loaner agreement. So I had to go into the service center. I had to find somebody and they had to uh, reset it for me. Then it was all smooth after that. But yeah, a little bit more um, glitchy than last time, <laughs> which I hope isn't a bad omen to uh, what is going to happen on this repair visit. Well, uh, spoiler alert, it was. So fast forward now, it's been a couple days and uh, I couldn't really drop my car off smoothly like I showed. It wouldn't let me accept the loaner agreement. I had to go have the app reset by the guy inside, which is kind of a pain because there really aren't that many people inside the service center. So you have to kind of go into the back room and find somebody, which was a whole thing. The guy wasn't super nice, to be honest, uh, but he did get the app reset. You know, the main form of communication is through the Tesla app during this whole process. 
So if it's not working correctly or they're not responding to the messages, there's no other way to talk to anybody. So you kind of rely on that efficiency. And when it works really well, it's great. When it doesn't work well, it's a real pain in the butt. So they're messaging me back and forth on the app, right? And they're saying, like, when are you getting these alerts? You know, what are the different pieces that you need fixed? And I'm like, I already sent all of this to you guys. I told you what alerts I was getting. I told you where the trim was that needed to be fixed. I dropped my car off at 1.15 p.m. They messaged me at right before 5 p.m. and said, it's ready for pickup. And I was like, there's no way that all of that got fixed that quickly when last time it took a full day. So I pull up the app, right? and I go to the service appointments and I see my current service appointment, it's already been completed, right? So everything's gone through, I can go to my service summary and everything, but then I have an additional appointment already scheduled with mobile service. And I'm like, okay, what's this mobile service appointment? And they're like, well, the trunk piece that you needed to get replaced, we don't have in stocks, so we had to order it. And I'm like, okay, no big deal there. And I'm like, did it look weird to you guys? Like, did you guys mess it up last time? Or did, I mean, there's no way I could have messed it up because I've never been in that part of the car before. So it had to have been when you were fixing something prior and they just didn't respond. Whatever that is what it is, they're gonna fix it eventually. I just have to wait for a mobile service appointment. And then I'm like, okay, at least they fixed the steering wheel issue and they fixed the door trim piece that I needed fixed. That was my number one complaint and my first reason I made the service appointment was for that trim piece. Get the car back, whatever, I'm driving it. And I look over and I'm like, that freaking trim piece is not fixed. It still looks exactly the same. I sent them three pictures of that trim piece and said, I need this piece fixed. I don't want to mess with it. I don't want to break anything. Disassemble it, pop it back in place, whatever you have to do. If it's super simple, please just do it. And they didn't fix it. And I'm messaging them back. I'm like, hey, the number one thing I asked you all to fix is not fixed. It's still popped out. It's like they just completely ignored that piece of the instruction that I said because I sent like the trim piece and the steering wheel in the same line but I made sure I clarified to them before I left the car, hey, these are two separate items. And they were like, got it, we know. Clearly not. Now they did fix the steering wheel sound. So normally when it would hit that point right there, it would go shh, shh. They disassembled the steering wheel and made sure the pieces weren't rubbing together. So great, they fixed that. I get these steering column module errors like every time I turn the car on. You know what, let's do it right now. Let's see how many I've gotten since I started driving now. I've got some, what do you know? Steering column control module A016 hardware error. I get it every single day. Now, thankfully they don't pop up on the actual screen that often. I've seen two, but I get them every single day, every single time I drive the car. And they've already replaced the steering column control module once before. So why am I still getting these errors? Somebody out there, please, that's watching this video that knows anything about the steering column control module, why am I getting errors A016, steering stock module hardware error detected? Is it because I don't have stocks? Is it because it's swipe on the screen? Is that the reason? And they just need to fix it on the system? Maybe. And that's a great simple answer. I'd love if that were the case. I don't know. It just freaks me out. Again, none of these things seem like life-threatening or uh, performance altering or anything like that. It's just really frustrating to get them fixed and still have the issues. So the big things I needed fixed, door panel trim, number one. The trim on the back liner above the back seats was two. Steering wheel sound was three. Steering wheel, you know, column module alerts was four. They fixed, they did not fix the trim on the door panels. They scheduled me an appointment to fix the trim on the back. They did fix the steering wheel and they did not fix the steering column module errors. So far, of the three things I asked for, I got one of them fixed already. And I even sent them messages in my little message history with the mobile service and said, I need you to fix this trim piece because it did not get fixed. And they said, oh, send us pictures. And I'm like, I've sent you 15 pictures of this trim. So hopefully they freaking fix my trim over on my door panels when I get my mobile service appointment, which is at an unknown date because they have no idea when they're gonna get the part in. And that's where I'm at. So again, I try to keep perspective here. My car still drives fine, except for the weird steering wheel thing. These are all, you know, visual issues, little imperfections and things. And I know for a fact they weren't like that before because I can look at this door panel, I can see it's not popped out of place. And I'll show you over there how it is popped out of place. Like, look, look at how far it's popped out. Like, this is what it should look like. Telling me that is within spec? Like, come on. I can't get it to push, look, there. That's it, that's within spec, guys. Don't worry about it. Definitely shouldn't look like that. Should look like that. So as you can see up here, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but do you see how the middle portion there kind of bubbles up in the center? That was not always like that. It was not like that before I took it to service the first time. 
and now it's like that. So I don't know what they mess with, but you can see it kind of just, you know, it's not aligned properly. You can see how much thinner the black trim line is back there than it is over here. So that needs fixed. Oh, and I completely forgot to mention the passenger side controls that I was supposed to get fixed last time, the button to open the door works, but the window control does not work now. And I don't know, because I didn't test it, and this is on me, I didn't test it when I first got it fixed, so it could have just never gotten fixed to begin with, but it definitely doesn't work now. So add that to the list for the mobile service guy. I just remembered that as I was getting ready to stop recording this video, but that is another huge pain in the butt. If I had only had the singular service incident and everything had gotten fixed, I would have a really positive outlook on it. But now after dealing with the second round of service appointments where things did not go smoothly, it's really kind of leveled out my expectations of what people's personal experiences of the service center will be. Maybe it was an off day. Maybe they were having a bad one. I don't know. But when you very clearly list out things that should be pretty simple to fix in a service center, you keep the car for three plus hours and you only fix one of the things, that's really frustrating. Again, didn't cost me any money, so I'm not mad about that. And I did want to mention they did actually address the front door, uh, passenger front door, and they said passenger front door inspected and found within specification, ordering rear parcel shell for future visit. Found within specification? I don't even think you looked at the spot I told you to look at because it's not within specification, it's popped out. Put it back in. So yeah, that was my second experience with Tesla service. And I have a future appointment with mobile service. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully when there's a guy standing right in front of me, I can be like, see, see the trim, please fix trim. <laughs> Try and make it as simple as possible. Hopefully this uh, is enlightening to you guys. I know it's not as positive as kind of my normal videos, but I'm sharing my honest experiences here. And, uh, you know, it was an unfortunate one. And hopefully if I have to do any future appointments that they go a lot smoother than that. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like. Let me know down in the comments what you think. If you have any explanations on what this steering column control module error is, A016, please let me know. I'd love to know down in the comments if you guys are way smarter than me. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.